after me, Father. One more time, say, Father. The grace for dominion. Let it rest upon me. Go ahead and pray. Father, is someone pray. Let it rest that upon grace me. that empowers me to walk in Let dominion. It Let it rest upon me. Someone is praying. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. The Bible says they heard the word just like we did, but the word did not profit them, not being mixed with faith in them that heard it. Are you ready to pray another prayer? Father, the grace to obey, I receive. Go ahead and pray. The grace to obey. The grace to obey not just to know the grace to obey the bible says now that you know these things happy are you if you do them for in jesus mighty name we pray Father, we thank you because you'll speak to us one more time and change our lives. It is true that the entrance of your word gives light and let it give understanding to the simple. Bless our hearts and be exalted in our midst. For in Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. God bless you. Please be seated with a loud hand clap unto Jesus. Amen. Thank you for this honor. We'll go straight to the word. I believe that the Lord wants to speak to us, challenging our hearts tonight along the lines of this theme. It takes knowledge and understanding to walk in dominion. And every time God wants to empower a people, the starting point of that empowerment is his word. The value of the anointing of the Holy Spirit is that it comes upon a life that is full of understanding. In ignorance, you will not be able to reveal the full potential of the power and the grace of the Spirit. Hallelujah. Amen. First Peter chapter 2 and verse 9. My goodness. Alisha lakoste beneko siata. Anisha lutra kose pretutiara. Mola. More power, more of you in my life. More love, more power, more of you in my life. The Bible says, but you are a chosen generation. Number one, then it says you are a royal priesthood. He calls us a holy nation. Then he calls us a peculiar people. Four profound descriptions. Number one, a chosen generation. Number two, a royal priesthood. I will dwell there in a bit. Number three, is a holy nation. And then number four, a peculiar people. Then immediately it moves to our mandate. He says, on the strength of this description, we have been mandated to show forth the praises of him that had called us out of darkness into his marvelous light. Revelation chapter 5 and verse 6. Very profound scripture. 5 and verse 6 revelations. The Bible says we have been made unto our God. 5 and verse 10, my apologies, 5, 10. Kings and priests, other versions will say a kingdom of priests. We have been made unto our God. 
you will soon understand the implication of this prophetic statement. Kings and priests. Now write the following please. Number one. Believers are called and ordained to be the manifestation of the glory of God upon the earth. Our corporate mandate as believers is that we have been ordained by God to be the manifestation of the glory of God upon the earth. Hallelujah. Do you believe that? That everyone under the sound of my voice and the many who are following by television, by internet, in Christ, your ordination is that you have been called to be a manifestation of the glory of God. The word glory comes from many expressions, but two very important ones. The Hebrew is the word kabod. The Greek is doxa. And both of them is an attempt to describe the worth of a thing. So when you say the glory of a thing, you have to describe all the features that make that thing expensive, special, or worthy of being desired. When the Bible says the believer is supposed to be a manifestation of the glory of God, it means that all that makes God, God, his power, his wisdom, his favor, are we together? Your life should be an unending revelation of all the multifaceted dimensions that are in God. The apostle simply calls it living epistles. That means your life should be a continuation of someone's Bible study. The moment they look at your life, where they stop as they close that Bible, you become the opening of that Bible again. That they read the favor of God through your life. They read restoration through your life. Through your life, they know God can lift. God can bless. God increases men. Are we learning already? So that our ordination in Christ is that every one of us, that eventually we become a manifestation of the glory of God. In Romans chapter 8, Paul is speaking and he says, verse 18, he says, for our light affliction, palika parakusia, our light afflictions, give us Romans 8:18. Which is but for a moment, he says, that it is able, uh, how does he put it now? Did I get that right? I reckon, my apologies, that the sufferings of this present time is not worthy to be compared with the glory. There is a glory that should be revealed in the saints. As it is now, your life may not capture it, but don't be discouraged. The Bible says, now are we the sons of God, and it doth not yet appear. It doth not yet appear. When you see a mango seed, you really do not know the kind of potential that can come out of that seed. When that seed is subjected to the right environment, and the law of time and process kicks in, eventually that mango seed will become a giant tree that will produce other seeds that produce other trees. So in one seed is a forest. A forest concealed. But that seed can remain a seed forever. It does not become a forest under every condition. There are conditions. Is someone hearing now? Say my life. Oh, let the devil hear it. Say my life must become a manifestation of the glory of God. One more time, say my life. Your life includes your job, it includes your health, it includes your children, it includes everything that makes you you. Must become a manifestation of the glory of God. Number two. The Bible says in Ephesians chapter 2 and verse 10, I'm describing for you the ordination of the church based on God's description. Ephesians 2 and verse 10 says, We are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus, unto good works, he says, which God had preordained that we should work in them. Whether you work in the reality of it or not is something else, but that in the mind of God, regardless your background, 
regardless your family, regardless your history, the negative antecedents that has followed your life, it does not change God's preordination for you. Ephesians 3 and verse 10, Paul is mentoring the church in Ephesus and he says to the intents that now unto principalities and powers in heavenly places might be made known by the ecclesia, the church, the manifold, multifaceted wisdom of God. So we have been ordained by God to be a manifestation of his glory. Now, the second thing I want you to learn tonight, and please pay attention, is that the manifestation of God's glory in any life, in any territory, and in any destiny depends not just on the will of God, but your adherence to divine patterns. Patterns forerun the glory of God. Just because it is your preordination to walk in dominion does not mean you will walk in the experience of that prophecy. There are many things God said in the Bible that did not come to pass. Because midwifing prophecy and manifestation is adherence to divine patterns. Leviticus chapter 9 and verse 6 is God helping someone. In this revelation will be the answer as to why you are asking, why is my life like this? In spite of the dreams, in spite of the vision, in spite of this theme, kings and priests. Let's read together. Revel Leviticus 9 and verse 6. Are you ready? Read it as loud as you can, if you can see. Ready? One to read. And Moses said, uh-huh, this is the thing which the Lord commanded that ye should do, and the glory of the Lord shall appear unto you. It will not just come because of desire. It will not just come because of prophecy. There is a... If you do not adhere to that pattern, you cannot see the glory of God. Listen, every possibility in the kingdom is connected to a divine pattern for its manifestation. Health, wealth, influence, increase. All of the dimensions of God's glory. They do not just happen because it is the will of God. They happen because the saints have a thorough understanding of his patterns. And obtain grace to walk in keeping with his patterns. If you are following say amen. Exodus chapter 25. We'll look at verse 9 and then we'll go to verse 40. Please, let's hurry up. You won't believe that I've not even started my teaching. I'm just establishing the fact, whenever we stop, we pray. But it's important for us to know this. Moses is building the tabernacle in the wilderness. And here is God, who is a God of patterns. He comes to him in verse 9 and says, According to all that I show thee, after the pattern of the tabernacle and the pattern of all the things thereof, so shall thou make it. Don't create your formula. If it is my glory you want to see, there is a pattern. Verse 40. And look that thou make them after their pattern, which was shown unto you in the mount. Is someone learning already? Now go to Exodus chapter 40, verse 16. 40 and verse 16. Then we jump to 33. I hope you are not tired of the word. The Bible says, Thus did Moses, according to all that the Lord had commanded him, so did he. Now verse 33. He's building according to pattern. Reading to 35. And he read up the court round about the tabernacle and the altar and set up the hanging of the court gate. So Moses finished according to pattern. The result, and a cloud. A cloud covered the tent of the congregation. And the glory of the Lord filled the tabernacle. 35. And Moses was not able to enter into the tent. Why? Because the cloud abode thereon. 
And the glory of the Lord filled that tabernacle. Every time you see the manifestation of the glory of God in a life, in a church, in a territory, it is because his patterns have been kept. Are we blessed? Now, I said all that to take you to what I'm about to discuss now. That as far as dominion in the earth is concerned, there is a pattern that controls dominion upon the earth. Are we together now? The pattern for dominion upon the earth is called king, priest, prophet formation. This is the tripartite formation from the entire Old Testament that has controlled the exerting of dominion. Everywhere you see men and you see nations excel in the Bible, it is because they honor this pattern. King, priest, prophet. Are we together? And you see, you were only given the liberty in the Old Testament to be one or two of them. No one was given the liberty to be all three. You will understand Revelations 5 and verse 10 when I'm done showing you the advantage that the saints have today. You did not have the liberty to be both a king, a priest, and a prophet. So if you were a king, you would have to pray and depend on the arrival of a prophet or a priest for that formation to be filled, for victory to be established. Even hedonistic nations like Egypt, they simulated that pattern for their victory. The Bible says, when the Pharaoh had a dream, he called on his wise men and astrologers. You see that now? They were not kings, but they were those who were mediums that accessed the divine. You will never walk in dominion if you do not understand the patterns. There was a man in the Bible, I wish I had time, my God. I think that should be 1 Samuel 13. Please go to verse 8. There was a very noble king in the Bible called Saul. Saul wanted to be both king and priest at the same time. And he lost his throne as a consequence. Is that... Okay, yeah. The Bible says, and he tarried seven days. So Samuel had given them a word to wait in Gilgal that he was coming within a week. And the week had passed and he had not arrived. Pressure was mounting upon him. And he took the initiative that I am a king. Perhaps let me also be a priest. Watch what happened. The Bible says, but Samuel came to Gilgal. And the people were scattered from him. Next verse, please, very quickly. And Saul said, bring Hitha a burnt offering to me. This is no longer the jurisdiction of kings. He stepped into the priestly ministry, although he was a king. And he offered burnt offering. The offering was accurate, but the person doing it was wrong. Next verse, verse 10. And it came to pass, watch this, that as soon as he had made an end, of offering the bond offering. The prophet and the priest now arrived. And he came to meet him and he saluted him. Verse 11. And Samuel said, what is this that you have done? What initiative did you take like this? You have violated a pattern. It is true that the king, priest, prophet formation should be. But you are only a king. It is not given to you to be both a prophet and a priest. And watch this. He gave an explanation. You would think it would suffice. Because I saw that the people were scattered. And then you had prolonged the days appointed. And the Philistines were gathered together in Mishmak. Next verse. Reading to 13. Therefore said I, the Philistines will come down upon me. And I have not made the sacrifices, the supplications. Therefore I offered. Are you seeing now? He is saying I know that our victory rests upon this pattern. But I'm waiting for you to complete that equation. And the enemies are mounting. The king is there. But the priest is not yet there. The prophet is not yet there. So dominion cannot happen. So I took initiative. My God. 
Verse 13. And Samuel said to Saul, you have done foolishly. He says, thou hast not kept. Is that in your Bible? You have not kept the commandment of the Lord, which he commanded. For now, the Lord would have established thy kingdom forever. But because you violated this pattern 14, watch this. Give us 14. Now your kingdom shall not continue. And the Lord had sought him a man after his own heart. And the Lord had commanded him to be captain over his people for the simple reason that thou hast not kept the patterns. Please be seated. That every time you want to see dominion upon the earth, the pattern that has been put in place is the presence of the king, the priest, and the prophet. Usually, in most cases in scripture, the priest is also the prophet. The priests never became kings, but they ordained kings and they removed kings. So, in order of priority, the priesthood was higher than the king. Follow carefully. You will need to understand this. Are we together now? Now we come to the New Testament. I don't have all the time, sadly, to begin to give you all the story about priesthood. But you see, the first mention of priesthood in scripture was Melchizedek. The Melchizedek priesthood. And there were only two people under that priesthood. Melchizedek and Jesus. Now by covenant, the saints. Are we together? The next mention of priesthood is what we call Potiphera, the priest of On. This was in Egypt. And his wife, his daughter, Asena, who married, who got married to Joseph. They had priesthood. That was why Egypt was a place of power. Hallelujah. And so we see that according to scripture, there is a Levitical priesthood that started with the sons of Levi. That's how Aaron came out of that priesthood. And then the Melchizedek priesthood. Are we together now? There's no point going through the theological details, but it's important for you to know that in priesthood, in the ancient times, the assignment of a priest was, number one, to mediate between men and God. He was the principal revealer of the will and the counsel of God. The prophetic came out of priesthood. Are we together now? So the first assignment in the Old Testament of priesthood to, was to mediate between men because until Christ came, there was no possibility of having a personal experience with God. It had to be a corporate experience of God as revealed by a chosen vessel. Are we learning? If you are together, say amen. amen. So Jesus shows up and begins to redefine things. And today, he makes a very profound statement. You are a chosen generation. Huh. Then he uses a term that should not be used together. He says you are a royal priesthood. What changed? A royal priesthood. Hmm. Then we get to Revelations and John is given a new order. And he says, we have been made unto our God. This dual formation that completes the pattern for dominion. Kings and priests. One person. Now you understand my teaching. We have been made kings. That every believer in Christ has the liberty today to operate priesthood. And the advantage of dominion by being kings. Please sit down. Let's talk a bit about it. Someone pray in the spirit in one minute. Something is about to change in your life. Something, an orientation by the spirit. You're not an ordinary indigent coming from Wari or Nigeria or Africa. No, there is an ordination upon you to be a manifestation of the glory of God and the possibility for walking in the patterns that make for dominion have been afforded you today in Christ. Hallelujah. 
Now, let's talk about the priesthood of the believer in one minute. Because you see, in order of priority, it is the priest that births kings. You can have a priest and a prophet without a king, but you cannot have a true king without a priest. Samuel never became a king, but he ordained Saul and removed Saul. That means in the order of spiritual priority, the health of your being a king depends on the excellency of your priesthood. Follow carefully that if there is something wrong with your dominion, the diagnosis is that we have to refer to your priesthood to check what is happening there. That any time situations and circumstances do not obey you, it is not your crown that is the problem. We need to go to your altar. Is someone listening now? So most believers are in shock as to why the elemental forces, why systems and structures do not listen to them. So they say you are a king, but you wore your kingly regalia too early. The first that you were to wear was your priestly regalia. The value of a king is in the health of his priesthood. All kings were as powerful as the altars that backed them. Did you hear what I said? Is the reason why Pharaoh could look at Moses and said, you are joking. You should know better. All you see is not all there is. And Moses came and said, I may not be a king, but I met the Lord. He threw his rod and the king laughed. Janus, Jambers, bring your rod. Let him know that in Egypt, it is not only a Pharaoh that sits, but there is an altar that makes Egypt, Egypt. Are we together? Now, today for the believer, please listen, and I want you to write. Today for the believer, your priesthood is a holistic capture of all the spiritual activities that make for your knowing God, your encounter with him, and your transformation. When we say priesthood for the believer, we are describing the entirety of, of the activities you engage in that culminate to your knowing God and culminate to your transformation. Are we together now? When we say you are a priest, we're not talking of the one who offers bond offerings like it were before. But now we are describing it's a holistic capture of all the spiritual activities that make for your intimacy with God your conformity to the image and the character of the Christ in experience and then your transformation. The tools that make you a king are only found when you become a priest. Let me say it again. The tools that make you a king are only found in the place of priesthood. I'll repeat it one last time. The tools that make you a king are only found in the place of priesthood. If you ignore priesthood and you want to be a king, you will be a king without a crown and a scepter. The crown and the scepter is not found in the palace. It's found in the secret place. So when the Bible says, we have been made unto our God, kings and priests, it is the pattern for dominion. But you need to understand that in order of spiritual priority, priesthood is what births kingship the value of being a king is on the strength of your priesthood are we together therefore your priesthood today describes the health and the strength of your prayer life your word study life your fellowship with the spirit your sacrifice. These are the spiritual activities. That was the apostolic model of priesthood that was given to us in Acts chapter 2 and verse 42. They continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine and in fellowship, in breaking of bread and in prayer. Acts chapter 6 and verse 4. But we will give ourselves continually to prayer and to the ministry of the word. You are not a priest until we examine the health of your prayer life, the health of your word study life, the health 
of your participation in the house of God because there is a blessing that is only found when believers are gathered. Psalm 133, for there the Lord has commanded the blessing, even life forever. No matter how you know God, there is a dimension of him you will never know until you are in the corporate gathering of the saints. Are we together? So when you say you are a priest, it is a title that does not earn any respect in the spirit until it is powered by your prayer life, powered by your word study life. There are many people who claim I am a priest, but it is clear that life has refused to respect that honor and that title because it is not a blind title. It is a call to responsibility. If you say you are a priest, whether serving the devil or serving God, one thing is common between them. There is no laziness. Both are a call for responsibility. Am I right on that? Whether it is a, an evil priest in the village, they are not lazy people. There are things common between all priesthoods, regardless who you serve. Prayer. But we will give ourselves continually. Ladies and gentlemen, you want to stir up and stand in the position of priesthood. You have to master the mysteries of the altar. Situations and circumstances will not bow to you because of your name. They have no regard for your face. They respect the fire that burns upon your altar. Is God speaking to someone? So do not say you are a priest until you have invested time building in prayer. And I wish I had time I would have taught you. According to scripture, there are four assignments of prayer. Number one, and the major assignment of prayer is for your growth and transformation. Luke 9, 29. And as he prayed, the Bible says, the fashion of his countenance were altered and his raiment became white and glistering. Assignment number two of prayer is a platform for making requests and obtaining promises. The Bible says, and what things soever ye desire, when ye pray, not when ye wish, when ye pray, believe that thou receivest them and thou shalt have them. Assignment number three for prayer is as a tool for spiritual legislature. Hmm. Are we together? The Bible says, declare thou that ye mightest be justified. Number four, the fourth assignment of prayer is as a prophetic tool for warfare and intercession. And I sought for a man to stand in the gap. And there was none. That should be Ezekiel 22 and verse 30, 31. Hallelujah. Satan, I desire to save you like wheat, but I have prayed for you that your faith fail not. And when you are converted, use that same formula to strengthen your brethren. That every time you see an attack, according to James 5, 13, is any man afflicted, let him pray. You are not a priest. If you do not build the altar of prayer. Number two. Your soundness in scripture. Is what gives you authority in life. The word authority comes from the Greek word exousia. And that word is a summation of your understanding. Authority exousia means the capacity. To stand in the stead of another. And that happens upon the strength of light. Isaiah 60 and verse 1 says arise. Shine, not because you are tired of sitting there. It says, for thy light has come. Amplified says, arise from the depression and the prostration that circumstances have kept you. Rise to a new life. Yeah. Hallelujah. We rise in this kingdom upon the strength of the mysteries that we have. Matthew chapter 13 and verse 10, 11. It says, it has been given unto you to know the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven. Galatians chapter 2 and verse 2. The apostle said, I went up by revelation. Is God speaking to someone? And so, number one, your prayer life. You want to be a priest indeed. You must have high level spiritual illumination. John 1, 5. That is that. The Bible says, in, when you read Genesis chapter 1 and verse 5, the Bible says, God called the light day 
and he called the darkness night. Watch this. He never called evening darkness. He called the absence of light darkness. That means even if it is 12 midnight in your life and you have light in the spirit, you are in the day. Are we together now? So that the realm of the spirit does not work with chronological time. No. If it is 6 p.m. in my life, I am still a custodian of light. It is day. And the Bible says there is a relationship between darkness and weeping. That weeping endures for as long as there is night. The absence of light. He called the light day. So if you catch a revelation by 10 p.m., your night has become day. It can be 12 noon and in the spirit you are in darkness. Hallelujah. Are we together? Priesthood now. So here we have a robust prayer life. We have access to light. And how many of you know that light is in degrees? Am I right on that? Paul was mentoring the church in Corinth and he said there are all kinds of bodies. There are bodies terrestrial and there are bodies celestial. He says even among the stars, one differed from another in glory. Not in size, in glory. Have you gone to an expensive store and you see something so small, annoyingly small, and you make a mistake of touching it and they tell you a price that you almost want to rebuke the person speaking? Am I right on that? Then you'll see another looking like a stature taller than you and is almost next to nothing. The difference is not the size, it's the glory that is hidden in them. Women know this, I hope men understand. Women can carry jewelries so small, so tiny, and they tell you this is pure gold, 24 carat, and they call a name that you almost want to block your ears. One differed from another in glory. Watch this. The moment light goes off in your house, notice how you begin to switch different lights until you finally own the light you desire. You start with maybe your phone light. It used to be candle, but now we've gone past candle. So phone light is not enough to turn the room into night, but it's enough for you to take the first step. The phone light leads you to the generator room. Am I right on that? The moment you get to the generator room, you have to use the phone light as small as it is to maybe put your diesel. And then when you switch it on, you off the phone. Am I right on that? And then the generator is there. And sometimes the generator can run until 6 or 7. The moment sunlight comes, you off the generator in most cases. Because a higher dimension of light has come. Now, I said that to tell you this. The Bible says, he made two great lights. There were many lights he made, but he made two great lights. One to rule the day and the other to rule the night. There are lights that help you rule in the day. And there are lights that help you rule in the night. I'm praying for someone here. Your appetite for the word that puts you in a place of understanding. May that grace rest upon you. I stand upon the grace on this altar and I prophesy to someone your days of ignorance that has punished you recycling seasons of pain may it come to an end now say I am a priest let the devil hear you say I am a priest I am a priest means I make up my mind to be committed to prayer I am a priest means I make up my mind to be committed to an understanding of scripture. I am a priest means I make up my mind to give myself to fellowship with the spirit and the saints. I am a priest means all the sacrifices that priesthood demands, I am willing to make for it. This is priesthood for you. Let me show you five rewards of priesthood and they all happen to be the tools you need to be a king. One, is God helping us? If you're a man of God here, with all due respect, please listen to me. If you do not understand these elements of priesthood, you may not find yourself walking in dominion. 
It says they know not, neither will they understand. They walk on in darkness and all the foundations of the earth are out of course. Psalm 85 and verse 6 says, I have said, in spite of your experience, I have said, ye are gods and all of you are children of the Most High. Verse 7 says, but you shall die like mere men and fall like one of the princes. What do you get when you are a faithful priest? You will get the tools that now qualify you to be a king. Are you ready? There are five of them. Number one, the first token you get from effective priesthood is wisdom. Let me give it to you. Wisdom is not found in the palace. If it were found in the palace, Pharaoh will not call Joseph. Wisdom is not found in the palace. It is used in the palace, but it is not found in the palace. As I just turn, I just saw light, and I'm I'm seeing I'm seeing the number five, and the Lord is telling me that there are five people here by the Spirit of God. You have prayed and you have fasted. Watch this. There is the spirit of prophecy on five people. Please, I want you to pick those five people now and bring out for me. I want to stretch my hand. I just saw that light. In the name of Jesus, I don't know where they are, but wherever you are, you have been walking with God in the secret place, and the Lord is saying, your season apparatus care. Please bring them out. I stretch my hands. Let that fire, let that light, wherever you are, by the Spirit of the living God, please let me have them here. In the name of Jesus, I'm praying for you of these five people. Let that grace from heaven rest upon you and turn you to another man like Saul was turned to another man. Bring them out and turn you to another man like Saul. Please help that lady. Can I teach you a little song in this church? I, 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 I. Glory be to God. Hi, 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 hi. Glory be to God. Hi, 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 hi. Glory be to God. Bring them out. Hi, 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 hi. Glory be to God. Hi, 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 hi. Glory be to God. Hi, 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 hi. Listen. Hallelujah, hallelujah, glory be to God. Hallelujah, hallelujah, glory be to God. Hi, 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 h